everyone a big big welcome back to my channel can you tell that i am excited for autumn so today we're going to be talking about all of my most anticipated releases for september through december these anticipated releases videos are some of my absolute favorites to film i just love looking ahead and getting excited about new books there are some really really good ones in here we have literary fiction of course we have poetry some historical fiction we have children's fiction and even a romance novel. All of the physical copies of these books that I feature in this video were kindly sent to me by the publishers. They are mainly proof copies, so a big, big thank you. Let's get into the good stuff, shall we? First up, coming on the 2nd of September by Picador, is All the Names Given by Raymond Antrobus. This is a new poetry collection, and as is typical of Raymond Antrobus's poetry, this collection explores a vast range of themes, including family, history and belonging, conflicting social and cultural identities, childhood and memory, and also adolescence and marriage. This collection is also punctuated throughout with captions to describe the silences and transitions inspired by a deaf sound artist. So I first discovered Raymond Antrobus's poetry last year, and absolutely fell in love. His poetry is startling and vulnerable and aching with feeling. The craftsmanship and wordplay is impeccable. Naturally, I was very, very excited to hear about this new collection. I have already read this one. It was absolutely stunning. If you do want to hear more of my thoughts on it, then go and check out my last recent reads video. Also coming on the 2nd of September by Chicken House is Artie and the Blue Gods by Jasbinda Balan. This is a middle grade novel telling the story of a young girl named Artie who lives on an island with her aunt. Her only comforts are her books filled with Indian myths, her fox friend and her toy rabbit. I believe one day a boy washes up on the shore of the island, Artie finds out that she has been lied to about who she and her aunt is, and she's finally able to figure out who she really is. So I read Tamarind and the Star of Ishtar by Jasmine de Balan last year and absolutely loved it. It was the best children's novel I have read in a very long time. Super magical and heartfelt and sweet and that is exactly what I'm hoping for from this one. This one does sound as though it could be a bit more fantastical than Tamarind but I am hoping for those common themes of family and belonging and homecoming. I am very, very excited to dive into this one. Next up on the 7th of September by Faber is Beautiful World, Where Are You? by Sally Rooney. This book is on everybody's anticipated releases list, I am sure. For those of you who may have missed it, Somehow, this is a new literary novel from the author of Normal People and Conversations with Friends. It follows four characters, Alice, a novelist, and Felix, who works in a warehouse, who meet and travel to Rome together. And we also have Alice's best friend, Eileen, and Simon in Dublin, two childhood friends who slip back into flirting with one another. Of course, I've already read this one. I read it as soon as I received my proof copy. I actually vlogged the whole reading experience for you guys. It was tons of fun. I will leave it linked around. If you want to hear more of my thoughts on this one, then you can find them in my last recent reads video. But know that I absolutely loved this. It was just the step up from Sally Rooney that I hoped it would be. I loved the slightly older age of these characters and the different types of relationships they were navigating. I loved that it was a bit more big picture regarding the world surrounding these characters. The prose was delightful, 
as always, I'm just very happy that this is now out and everyone else can read it. I can't wait to hear what all you guys think. Also coming on the 7th of September by And Other Stories, we have Keeping the House by Tice Sin. This is a new literary novel that is said to offer a fresh and humorous take on the London heroin trade. I believe it spans three generations telling the stories of the women who keep their families and their family businesses afloat. It is said to explore themes of community and belonging and love. I love and other stories. They are such a fab publisher. This book sounds great. I am really, really intrigued by the setting. It isn't something I have read too much about before. I love novels that span different generations of the same family. I love character focused novels. I think this is going to be really quirky and consumable but also quite eye-opening and scathing. I'm looking forward to this one a lot. Coming on the 16th of September by Pushkin Press is Dinner Party, A Tragedy by Sarah Gilmartin. This is another literary novel set between the 1990s and present day from both rural Ireland to Dublin. It tells the story of a family who are gathering for the anniversary of a death, ultimately uncovering old tensions and sending the host Kate spinning completely out of control. So this is another one that I have already read. I couldn't wait. This novel is so reminiscent of Anne Onright's novels and I love Anne Onright. Rural Irish setting, suffocating family, exploration of childhood and memories and loss. This book has a real tense, almost painful atmosphere. It really keeps you turning the pages. I really, really enjoyed this. A great new author to keep an eye on, I think. Go and check out my recent reads video if you want to hear more of my thoughts. Coming on the 21st of September by William Heinemann is Bewilderment by Richard Powers. This is a big, big release from the author of The Overstory. It follows the story of a man named Theo, who is an astrobiologist and searches for life on other planets. Theo is navigating how to best singularly bring up his son, who is experiencing a lot of troubles at school and also just with life generally, including being deeply affected by the destructive nature of humans and the decline of our world. I am currently reading this one and I am loving it. It is sublime. It's currently meeting all of my expectations about what I hoped it would be. It's very character focused very philosophical, the relationship between Theo and his son and everything that they're tackling together and individually is so touching and insightful. I love the intimacy in here but also the massive universe-wide scope. This is stunning so far, it couldn't be more at my street and it is massively living up. Coming on the 30th of September by Nine Arches Press is Single Window by Daniel Sluman. This is a new poetry collection from one of my favourite ever poetry publishers. It explores the experiences of Daniel and his wife Emily, one an amputee with chronic pain and the other suffering from Crohn's disease and fibromyalgia. The poems explore a very difficult year in which the two are unable to move and are confined to their home. Primarily this collection is said to explore the fear and isolation experienced by disabled people in Tory Britain. Doesn't this just sound brilliant? I cannot wait to read this one. I think it is going to be so intimate and eye-opening and shocking. Exploring themes of isolation and confinement more generally is something that is super important at the moment. I'm sure we can all find something to relate to in here. I think this is going to be great, probably really emotional, 
I can't wait to hear what Daniel Sluman has to say. Coming on the 7th of October by Faber and Faber is Burnt Coat by Sarah Hall. This is a new literary novel that is said to explore themes of passion and connection and transformation. I believe it tells the story of an old celebrated sculptor named Edith who is coming to the end of her life as she remembers a time during a lockdown when she brought a lover whom she barely knew into her studio for the first time. I adore Sarah Hall. She is a Cumbrian author, she is from the Lake District, like me. I've been wanting to read more of her work for ages. I was super excited to hear that she was coming out with something new. I just love her prose. It is super beautiful and engaging. This sounds very interesting. I love explorations of memory and desire. It has also been recommended by tons of really great authors, including Sarah Moss and Sarah Perry and Daisy Johnson. I am very excited for this one. Coming on the 12th of October by Simon and Schuster Children's is Aristotle and Dante Dive Into the Waters of the World by Benjamin Elia Sayens. This is a big one, friends. This is a YA novel. It is the long-awaited sequel to one of my favourite books of all time, Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe. That book came out years and years and years ago. This is way overdue. I believe this one follows the same two characters in the 1980s, a couple of years after the first book takes place. Ari and Dante are in love, but they must now figure out how to navigate a relationship together in a world that doesn't seem to understand them. I love Aristotle and Dante so much. The first book is such a perfect novel, so full of feeling and vulnerability and love. I am excited and very scared <laughs> for this one. Honestly, I don't really feel as though the first book needs a sequel. I can't imagine this book being as good as the first one, but I do really want to read it and just enjoy it for what it is. I am excited to meet these characters again. Coming on the 28th of October by HQ is The Christmas Escape by Sarah Morgan. If you're surprised to see this book on this list, I don't blame you. So this is a holiday romance, women's fiction type novel set during a Christmas holiday to Lapland. It follows the story of a woman named Christy and her husband, her best friend Alex, her young daughter and her husband's oldest friend. I believe marriages are tested, friendships are tested, long-held secrets unravel and unexpected romances bloom. So I don't typically read romance novels, but last Christmas I found my first perfect holiday romance novel that I absolutely loved. I think it was called The Three Christmas Sisters. It was of course by Sarah Morgan. I adored that book. I absolutely devoured it. It was the perfect balance of plot and character and Christmas goodness. Honestly, I became obsessed with Sarah Morgan and I am now going to read one of her Christmas novels every December. This is her newest one. I can't wait to cozy up and dive into it. Coming on the 30th of October by Carcanet Press, is Winter Recipes from the Collective by Louise Gluck. This is a new poetry collection told through a chorus of voices reminiscent of chamber music. This collection has been described as haunting. I believe it explores many different things that constitute a lifetime, including joy and old age and death. So I believe that Louise Gluck is a pretty well-established, celebrated poet. She won the 2020 Nobel Prize for Literature. This is like her 13th collection, I think. I haven't read anything by her before, but I have heard 
amazing things. I'm really excited to experience her poetry for myself. I think this could be quite special. Coming on the 11th of November by Vintage is Lily, A Tale of Revenge by Rose Tremaine. This is a historical novel set in 1850s London. I believe it tells a story of a young woman named Lily, who when she was a baby was saved by a police officer. As a child, she was sent to a hospital to be punished for her rebellious spirit. She is finally released into the harsh world of Victorian London, all the while this police officer is still watching over her and Lily is harbouring a terrible secret. I am so excited for this one. I absolutely adore Rose Tremaine. Her novel The Gustav Sonata was one of my favourite reads a couple of years ago. I'm up for reading anything she has written and something about this one in particular has just hooked me. I love me a dark Victorian historical novel every now and again, especially when they focus on a morally grey female character. This sounds delicious and enticing. I am so excited to read it next month during spooky season. Coming out on the 11th of November by Picador is The Fell by Sarah Moss. This is another of the bigger releases on this list, I'd say. This is a literary novel telling the story of a woman during a two-week quarantine period. She goes out on a solitary walk on a deserted moor and ends up falling and badly hurting herself. Sarah Moss is honestly such a brilliant writer and she is churning out the books at the moment. I've read Ghost Wall by her that I absolutely loved. I also read Summer Water last year. She is such a talent. Her writing is so beautiful and sparse. She creates the most wonderful, tense, layered atmospheres. She is always commenting on some wider social or political discourse. I'm sure this one is going to be no exception. I love that it takes place during a quarantine period. I'm sure that it's going to explore themes of isolation. I am so here for this one. Also coming on the 11th of November by Bloomsbury Circus is The Falling Thread by Adam O'Riordan. This is another historical novel, this one taking place in Manchester in the 1890s. It tells the story of middle-class Charles who is on his summer holiday away from university. He ends up in a relationship with his little sister's governess, resulting in terrible consequences. So this is a bit of a random one on this list. I have never heard of this debut author before. I haven't heard people talking about this book, but for some reason it's got me. I love the sound of the setting in here, the fact that it sounds kind of dark and plot driven and really intriguing, but it also sounds as though it may be very character focused, which is my favourite. It's described as being a captivating portrait of a family. I believe it focuses quite heavily on Charles's little sisters as they come of age as women as part of a new century. I think this one just sounds fab. And finally, coming on the 16th of November by And Other Stories is Somebody Loves You by Mona Arshi. This is a literary novel telling the story of a young girl who's mother is severely mentally ill and perpetually absent. The young girl ends up giving up talking, silence becoming her refuge, sheltering her from her chaotic, tumultuous life. So again, kind of a random one, but honestly, I just trust and other stories with anything. I've heard that this one is melancholy and death and filled with wry humour, exploring our personal stories and how we choose to share them or not share them. I think this one sounds fascinating. I've had really good experiences in the past with character focused, slightly whimsical novels from Under the Stories. I have very high hopes. Furthermore, 
Isn't this cover absolutely stunning? This whole thing has certainly got me hooked. So there we go, those are my most anticipated releases from now until the end of the year. I really hope you all heard of something that sparked your interest as always, please let me know if I missed anything. Is there anything else that I should be on the lookout for? I hope you're all doing really, really well. I hope you're all excited about upcoming releases as well. Thank you so much for watching, as always. It really, really does mean a lot. And hopefully I will see you soon in another one. Bye everyone.